we have Janet Catterall and Bronwyn Forster from James Cook University. Uh, Janet is a liaison librarian at JCU. She received her MLIS in 2002 from Syracuse University in New York and has worked in academic libraries in the US and Canada before joining JCU in 2016. Uh, Bronwyn is also a liaison librarian at JCU, uh, is the liaison librarian for business and law disciplines and providing support in HAS disciplines. She provides in-depth support for HDRs and researchers in advanced library skills to support their projects. Now I will uh, unshare my window and let you guys start your share. Over to you. Good afternoon, everyone. I hope everyone can see the slides and hear me okay. Um, I'm Janet, and I'm here with my colleague Bronwyn, and we're here to talk to you about supporting searches for cross-disciplinary systematic reviews. We're looking specifically at law and health crossovers. Uh, it's wonderful to be part of this online event, uh, so we'll get started. Um, I'd like to acknowledge and pay my respects to the traditional custodians of this land on which we are working and living today, the Jabagai, the Gimai, Wulaburi, Yidinji, and the Irakanji. And I'd like to humbly thank these people as a guest here and pay respects to them, their elders and their ancestors. And also to acknowledge it always was, is, and will be Aboriginal land. I'd like to extend a warm welcome to any people of First Nations descent that we have with us in the presentation today. So, just to give you a little bit of background, uh, this is a collaboration project between myself, a health librarian, uh, Bronwyn, who is a law librarian amongst other things, and a researcher in public health who is also about to get his law degree, Professor Alan Clough, who is not with us today. Uh, Bronwyn and I were invited by Alan to be involved in an online postgraduate class that looked at mental health and substance misuse in a public health context. The focus of this class caused students to actually discover a vein of publishing in a crossover space where health initiatives and processes met the law, particularly around human rights. The students found that researchers are publishing systematic reviews in this health and law space. There's a long tradition of systematic reviews in health and medical fields, as we know, and systematic reviews are now being published in many other practice-based areas. So we were wondering how a cross-disciplinary team would approach undertaking a systematic review in general but in particular, how researchers would approach the legal side of such research, how they might adapt systematic review methodologies to the very different priorities and indeed very different structure of how information is presented in legal databases. And what kind of support do researchers need when they're searching both health and legal databases? So we thought one way we might look at this would be to take a representative sample of these reviews look at their searches and appraise them. And we thought we could use a tool for this that's currently used in health called the PRESS tool. So PRESS stands for Peer Review of Electronic Search Strategies. And it was designed by the Canadian Agency for Drugs and Technology in Health in 2015. Uh, the point of it was to assist information professionals in peer reviewing each of the searches but as an appraisal tool, it provides a thorough checklist to evaluate searches. Um, it looks across uh, applying the research question to the search and then the appropriate use of subject headings, free text, searching, uh, Boolean proximity, spelling, syntax, limit, limits and filters. So this is what it looks like. Not that I'm expecting any of you to read this, but I just wanted to show this um, to indicate how thorough this checklist is. And there is a link there if anyone wants to look at it later. I'm now going to hand you over to Bronwyn and she's going to tell you a little bit about how we got started.
your muted Bronwyn. Um, so I'd, I'd also like to acknowledge the contribution of Professor Alan Clough to this project. And um, so we had, we developed a methodology for this research project. And um, we decided that we wanted at least one author who was, had uh, some kind of affiliation with a, the legal field. And uh, because we were looking at cross-disciplinary research between health and law. Uh, and so we also looked at some health databases as well as some legal databases. Um, and so we selected papers that um, had health researchers in the majority, but um, I, there were some legal related researchers as well on the authorship. Um, and because of the predominance of health researchers, we assumed that there would be familiarity with health databases and uh, subject heading searches. So the legal databases don't lend themselves to the kind of systematic searching that are normally undertaken with systematic reviews uh, in health. And the arrangement of the information and access is completely different. And this is a problem for us in finding cross-disciplinary papers, particularly in the legal databases. And um, so searching the legal databases was a problem for those who weren't familiar with the legal databases. And likewise, those who were expert uh, law professionals uh, had difficulty using the health databases. So next slide. So this is a couple of screen snaps of search screens um, for Westlaw, which is a legal database, uh, Westlaw AU to be specific. So there's only one line for free text and it's called a free text search and law databases use the terms, uh, terms and connectors rather than Boolean operators. And uh, they use a lot of jargon. So um, for this kind of research, we really only wanted to search commentary rather than primary sources of law. So there's two different sorts of uh, law sources, which is primary sources, which is the actual legislation and case law and commentary, which is self-explanatory commentary about the law. And um, so they do use Boolean terms, but they call them connectors. And an AND search is assumed as it is in Google and other databases, or you can use the ampersand symbol, not a capital A-N-D. And an OR search operator is in lowercase, which is not the case for other databases. And so you can see that there are quite uh, strong limitations in doing a complex search in the legal databases. I'm back to you, Janet. Thanks, Brennan. So we're going to show a couple of sample searches from the ones we selected here. Um, this first example is a very, very simple search. This came from a systematic scoping review from 2019. Its goal was to map areas of law influenced by the intersection between law and neuroscience and to identify key themes. And this research was undertaken by two people from the Faculty of Law of a Canadian university and one practicing lawyer from the same town. They searched only legal databases, Hein Online, Westlaw, Legal Source, and Legal Track. No health databases were included. This is the only example that worked that way from what we found. So if we have a quick look, I've got the six points of the press guide uh, tool up in the corner there. 
Um, we can see that in terms of research question, this search is way too simple to have translated a research question. Um, they are using one Boolean operator or, but no subject headings. There was no de medical databases, so there was no point to that. Um, but they're not using synonyms, keywords, uh, are very, very few, there's only two. Um, it's a very broad search. So what happened in this study was they had an extremely high recall. They originally started out wanting to search across a range of uh, more than a decade of years, and they were forced to narrow to a single year to make the number of articles manageable. So this is the result of trying to search with this very simple search and as we saw from Bronwyn's slide, in the free text area of a legal database, you can see this would be really um, problematic. And um, or you can also see there that they're using that legal database syntax for truncation on the neuro word neuro. So yeah, this um, search definitely would have been improved by using the press tool to go through these six areas. And if we look at the second search on this slide, this came out in 2017. Its aim was to identify studies that have looked at how judges and jurors responded to defendants with autism spectrum disorder. And this research was undertaken by one psych psychology academic and one barrister who was also a professor of law. They looked um, only at psych and medical databases. There was no law databases involved in this um, research. And again, if we go to the press, six points. Um, the research question itself is not really represented in this search. They're using Boolean operators, um, but they are not capitalizing or, they are capitalizing and. And if you look at the second collection of terms, they're putting together terms that really can't be conflated in this way in a search. So they've got um, jury, but also sentencing, but, and also court, um, all sort of in the same basket. Um, they're also critically here using um, a field searching restriction to title only. And so not surprisingly in this search, um, they had very limited recall. They actually only found four papers that matched their inclusion criteria and only really liked one of them in terms of hitting their criteria on the head. Um, there's also some syntax errors you can see in here. They're truncating inside of exact phrase searches. Um, and they're also using words like juror, jury, juries, which could probably be effectively truncated. They could use more keywords and synonyms and so on. And my point here is not really to be criticizing them, but to be showing um, that using something like a press tool or a press tool adapted to this cross-disciplinary area would be really helpful um, in the construction of this original search. There's one more example here. Um, this one came out in 2018. Its goal was to investigate the sentencing outcomes for defendants with fetal alcohol syndrome disorder. This had one FASD researcher, one educational psychologist, and one researcher from a Department of Justice Studies. And they were searching across a wide range of legal and health databases. Um, they seem to have reasonable recall and precision in their results. But again, if we go to the press, we can see um, how this search could have been made more effective. The research question isn't really reflected in the search string. They're using Boolean, um, but like the previous search, the second uh, collection of terms are quite disparate. So they've got victim, mitigating, sentencing, offender, court, all sort of lumped together with ors. And um, that's obviously going to affect their search. Um, they're not using subject headings, even though they were using health databases like Cochrane. That was one of the things that was surprising was the number of health researchers searching health databases without using subject heading searches. Um, they're using synonyms and they are not limiting their fields, um, but there are also syntax errors, uh, basic things. They're using exact phrase quotations around single terms. 
and using square brackets, which I'm not aware how databases would react to square brackets, but I certainly, the databases I use don't use them. So there's some um, examples, and these are not the best or the worst examples from what we found. They're just a typical selection. And the reason to show them is to show the challenges of searching in these two um, different areas and that the use of this press tool um, can be very helpful in improving the searches. I'm going to uh, hand you back to Bronwyn um, for our conclusions. Thank you, Janet. And so our investigations of the cross-disciplinary research outputs really demonstrate the value of such collaboration. And the use of the press tool is a clear, common sense, systematic approach to assessing elect electronic search strings and to examine the effectiveness of search strings and how those strategies address the research question. And while the, tr the press tool has been developed specifically for the evaluation of systematic search strategies in the health databases, I believe it could be easily adapted to effectively assess search strategies in other disciplines, which are increasingly using systematic review methodologies. It's absolutely clear the consultation of an information professional or librarian improves the quality of research and research outputs in systematic style reviews in all disciplines. And the embedding of a research librarian into a research team would facilitate higher quality research outputs. Thank you for listening. Are there any questions? Thank you very much for that presentation, Janet and Bronwyn. Um, it wouldn't be a research support community day without some systematic reviews. So thank you for bringing that. Um, so we, we have uh, quite a few questions and comments. So just quickly a comment from a health librarian uh, congratulating you on all this work and attempting this. Uh, and then uh, a separate question. Are you intending to publish this? Uh, are you gonna write a paper or anything to uh, go through what you've achieved? Uh, yes, this is actually, I, I presented a lightning talk at the beginning of this project last year. This is the follow-up with a bit more detail and then, yeah, we will be publishing um, a, a much uh, more detailed account of what we found, yeah. Hmm, I wonder if there's an opportunity for a playlist there so people can watch your lightning talk and this follow-up presentation. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, some more questions. Um, did you have support from your library management to do this work or did you have to do it in your quote-unquote spare time? A hmm. um, bit for me, I'll let Bronwyn answer as well. It's a bit of a combination of both. I mean, some of it grew out of our roles as liaison in helping in teaching and also helping in supporting a researcher. And, you know, some of it I did for the love of it because I wanted to see where it was going to end up. Yeah, I'd, I'd agree with Janet. We had some support from our uh, line manager and we, um, we did some of this in our own time. And... Um, but it was valuable work for me as the law librarian to see how cross-disciplinary cross -disciplinary research can intersect with legal research because legal research is typically very different, has a very different aspect to other disciplines. So that was the justification of spending work time on it. But uh, since I have a very strong interest in research support, um, I was happy, as Janet was, to do some work in my own time. Yeah, definitely um, an excellent professional development opportunity as well. I learned a lot from this project. Yes. And an invaluable input from a researcher in this field as well. Great, thank you. Uh, one last question before I hand over to Sarah. Uh, so sometimes researchers will present a representative version of their search rather than the actual searches used. 
Uh, do you think the researchers had presented their searches exactly as they had run them? Actually, the most effective searches were presented as appendices at the end in full. Uh, so yeah, I did, did have to take that into account. There were um, some searches that are not in the sample that I showed you, but in the sample that we found that you could tell that they wouldn't have run them as they described them. And I think in and of itself, that was really interesting. The people who put their searches in the appendix um, had much more detailed searches. The people that put them in the text, uh, less effective searches. Um, yeah, so you could sort of tell most of the time if it was as reported or not. Great, thank you.